Okay, here's question 14 on the higher calculator paper. Question 14 is made up of four parts. It's A, B here, and then there's also C and D, and it's eight marks altogether. And this is an algebra question in which you need to be trying to get full marks in or close to full marks. All right, the first part says expand and simplify. Expand means to multiply out and simplify means to tidy up. This is a pair of brackets. This is a type of calculation that you should be familiar with and you should be able to do via a couple of techniques. Some people use the box method for this. Some people just use the arrows. I'm going to use the arrows for this. So P times P is P squared. So I'm going to write them down as I do it. Then P times 4 is 4p, but remember it's p times minus 4, so that's going to be minus 4p. Then I'm going to use the 9. 9 times p is 9p. That's positive 9, so positive 9 times p is plus 9p. And then 9 times 4, 9 times 4 is 36, but positive 9 times negative 4, a plus times a minus is a minus. Okay, so I've picked up one of these two marks already. For just doing what I've done there, I've picked up one mark. Now I need to simplify. I've got p squared, just one of those. I need to combine all these p's together. I've got minus 4p and 9p, right? And that's a positive 9p. 9p take away 4p is 5p. That's positive 5p. And then at the end, I've got 36. So that's it. p squared plus 5p take away 36. If you do this by the box method, try it. See, you should get the same answer as what I've got there. Okay. Going on to part B now. In part B, it says solve this. Solve means to work out, work out the value of x. And if I just shift this up a bit, you'll see, actually it's not x, it's w. They want us to work out the value of w. <coughs> OK, so how do we go about this? I need to get rid of that 3 from the bottom. As If I read the equation first, it's 5w take away 8 divided by 3 is equal to 4 times w plus 2. So to get rid of that 3, which mean, which on this side is dividing by 3, I need to times the right-hand side by 3. I'm going to times everything there by 3. So one, if I get rid of the 3 on the left-hand side, I'll just get 5w minus 8. And if I times all of this by 3. 3 times 4 is 12, so that's 12w. 3 times 2 is 6, so I've got 6 there. OK, now, this is pretty straightforward. It's still solving an equation, but we have unknowns on either side. We have 5w here, we have 12w there. I have minus 8 and plus 6. I'm going to try to get all the w's over to one side. Now, because there are more of them here on this, this side here, on the right-hand side, I'm going to bring them all over to this side. So I'm going to leave the 12w there. I'm going to bring that 5w across. Yeah, I'm going to take that across there. If and when it moves across, it changes sign. Over here, it's positive. So when it lands on this side, it's going to be minus 5w. On the right, the left-hand side here, I've got that minus 8. When I bring that 6, or that positive 6, across, I bring positive 6 across, it's going to become... Actually, why did I put... That. That's that minus 8. It's still over there. When I bring that positive 6 across, it's going to become minus 6. So, I just need to tidy this up now. Minus 6 and minus 8. All together, that's minus 14. 12 take away 5 
is 7, so that's 7 W. If I want to work out what W is on its own, I need to get rid of that 7, which means I need to divide by 7. 14 divided by 7 is 2. Minus 14 divided by 7 is minus 2. What this tells me in the end is that W is equal to minus 2. Now, for many of you who are doing higher and are aiming for the top grades, this is one of the questions that you need to make sure you get. Read through it, do it a couple of times, and make sure you're confident with it. Okay, here are part C and D. Part C of this question says factorize. Now, this is a special case. This is a special case. If you have just two terms that you need to factorize and one's x squared or an x squared term and the other one is just a number, you need to look out to see if they're both squares. Now, in this case, I have x squared and think about 49, what number squared is that? That's 7 squared. Okay, And this is a special case called the difference of two squares. If you have a squared minus b squared, that is going to be equal to a plus b, a minus b. Now, you should be familiar with that. What I do need to do is to look it up, make sure you remember it. But when I factorize this, I'm going to get x plus 7 and x minus 7. This is only worth one mark, but it should be something that you know, you're pretty confident with, and you could repeat. Okay, going on to part D. Part D says to simplify. Simplify. Now what I've got there is 9, x to the power of 8, y to the power of 3, all of that to the power of a half. Okay, if something's to the power of a half, that means you're square rooting it. So if I had a number like 9 to the power of a half, I'll be square rooting it. But because everything inside the brackets is to the power of a half, right, and the power of a half is outside, that applies to everything in there. So what I have is 9 to the power of a half. I've got x to the power of 8, and all of that is to the power of a half and I've got y cubed, and all of that is to the power of a half. So let's work out each of those in turn. 9 to the power of a half, that actually means the square root of 9. The square root of 9 is 3. So that's the first part. 9 to the power of a half is 3. I'm actually going to write this under here as well so you can see where it's come from. 9 to the power of a half is 3. When I have a, a, a num something with a power, all to a power, so a power of a power, yep, we times the powers together. So this is going to become x to the power of 8 times a half, or a half of 8, that's going to be 4. So it's going to be x to the power of 4. And then at the end, I'm going to have y, <coughs> 3 times a half, 3 times a half, or half of 3 is 1.5, or 1 and a half. So the last part is y is equal to 1.5. Or you could write that as 3 over 2, or even 1 and a half. This last part, part D, not a lot of people answer this correctly. Take your time, think about it, break it down in stages, look at what I've done here, and make sure you do this. And overall, you can see this question is worth 8 marks. Make sure you can get it, especially those of you doing higher and aiming for the higher grades. Make sure you can do all of it.